Hey everyone, I really got surprising results when I tested both GPD Win 5 versions, the cheaper one with the Ryzen AI Max 385 and the premium model with the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 across all possible wattage settings in real games and synthetic benchmarks. At several power levels, the more expensive 395 chip with the 8060S barely seems to make sense at all. Of course, more CPU cores don't necessarily give you more gaming performance in a handheld. By the end of this video, you'll know which wattage settings actually matter, where performance scaling breaks down and whether the AI Max Plus 395 is really worth it over the 385 or if you're better off saving the money. And we'll also talk about if disabling cores makes any sense and if there's a difference between the performance when the devices are plugged in or if they're on battery. The goal here is to understand how Strix Halo behaves in a real handheld, how it scales with power, how efficient it is and which settings actually make sense for gaming. And I really made many discoveries that will lead to multiple upcoming videos because trying to cover all of these topics in one video would have made it far too long. So both handhelds you're seeing here are GPD Win 5s. They have the same chassis, same cooling, same 32 GB memory configuration. The only important difference here is the APU, AI Max 385 versus AI Max Plus 395. Before we jump into the results, let's quickly make sure we are on the same page about the hardware. Strix Halo is AMD's absolute high-end mobile APU platform, combining very powerful CPUs with even better integrated GPUs that are comparable to an NVIDIA RTX 4060 mobile. The AI Max Plus 395 sporting 16 cores and 32 threads with the Radeon 8060S with 40 CUs, while the AI Max 385 sports 8 cores, 16 threads and the Radeon 8050S with 32 CUs. For my tests, I manually adjusted the APU wattage step by step in the control center from around 4 watt all the way up to 85 watts and wrote down the results. But it seems as right now the handhelds are more or less ignoring every setting below 10 to 13 watts. So for today's tests, we kinda need to ignore the results below that. So for the first game of today, let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider because it reacts extremely well to changes in CPU power, GPU clocks, memory bandwidth, basically everything. That makes it perfect for understanding how wattage affects the performance. And I once more chose the same spot that you can see right here, changed the wattage step by step and took notes. The AI Max 385 results are represented by the blue bars and the AI Max Plus 395 by the red bars. And as you can see, from around 13 to 23 watt, the technically weaker 385 and its Radeon 8050S were outperforming the 395 and the 8060S. At around 25 to 28 watt, they are trading blows. Between 29 and 34 watt, the 385 is faster once more. And after that, the AI Max Plus 395 is finally taking a clear lead, though, to be honest, not as clear as I've expected. The maximum difference is only around 7 to 10%. Also here, we can see that above 80 watt, the 395 started to behave in a weird way, actually losing performance. And we'll see more of such behavior later. And obviously at higher wattages you're just adding more power, generating more heat and draining the battery faster, but the FPS barely moves anymore. However, at the highest wattage both handhelds basically perform identical, which I really didn't expect. And I have to point out once more, we are seeing 114 to 115 FPS at 1080p native with high settings on gaming handhelds. You know, that alone is just pretty good. If you look at the FPS per watt graphs, we can see that the two chips don't have their most efficient state at the same wattage. For the 385 it's around 13 to 24 watt, while for the 395 it's around 23 to 30 watt. As expected, after a certain point, the higher the wattage, the less FPS per watt you'll get. So efficiency ramps up quickly at lower wattages, reaches a very strong plateau in the early mid range and then drops off significantly as we push higher. Though keep in mind, depending on your in-game settings, at very low wattages, performance is obviously limited. Okay, and next up will be Cyberpunk 2077, for which I actually ran the integrated benchmark test more than 200 times at 1080p with the high preset, which also means FSR 2.1 was set to quality. And we can see that the same pattern as with Shadow of the Tomb Raider is repeating itself. 
The 385 is faster between 13 up to 29 watt, which to be honest is a very important area for gaming handhelds considering the battery life. And again, at a certain point, they trade blows, this time at 30 watt, while once more after that, the 385 is taking a short lead once more, until the 395 starts to finally outperform the 385 version. But again, only around 10% difference. I also manually deactivated CPU cores via the BIOS menu for both handhelds to see if less cores would make the chips more effective and maybe even give them a little FPS boost. Starting with the 395, I was reducing the 16 cores down to 6 cores only, meaning I deactivated no less than 10 cores. And surprise, surprise, as you can see here, the red bars represent the cut down 6 core version of the 395 and almost through the whole testing scenario, that cut down chip was a bit faster. It's not a huge difference, but it's repeatable and visible, up to around 7% in the mid-range sector. Now interestingly, that effect isn't as strong for the 385, especially at wattages between 13 and 35 watt, we're not seeing a difference at all. And after that, it's a smaller difference, proving this thesis of many, the 395 Plus does have too many cores for gaming. Which makes it clear why AMD is soon releasing the AI Max 392 and the AI Max 388 with 12 and 8 cores, but the more powerful Radeon 8060S with the for the CUs instead. And even reducing the active cores to only 4 seems to even slightly further improve the performance by a tiny bit, even with Cyberpunk 2077, especially at the lower TDPs, as expected. In fact, it just makes kind of sense, because with let's say 15 watt, you cannot support 16 cores and an iGPU in a good way. That's just much easier with only 4 to 8 cores active. Though, for the AI Max 385, that effect was not as big and sometimes it was more or less the same as with 8 cores. So, my suggestion would really be to try out 6 active cores only, while of course that depends on the game and yes, 1% lows are an important factor, which I'm not showing here, but in my tests I didn't see any additional stuttering when testing with 6 cores only. And last but not least, I've also tested the two handhelds on battery using the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark again and, well, for the AI Max Plus 395, there was almost no difference for the lower TDPs. Only at around 45 watt the performance drops compared to when the handheld was plugged in. That is also most likely because officially these handhelds are limited to 45 watt when unplugged, unless you force them to use more wattage. And a similar picture for the AI Max 385 on battery, though here the performance loss was a bit bigger throughout all TDP settings, except for around 30 watt, where, for whatever reason, and I retested this multiple times, it was faster on battery. Probably a configuration error for the 30 watt plugged in mode, I don't know. Also speaking of the battery, let's have a quick look on the actually system power usage at a variety of TDP settings and the resulting battery runtimes as well. And these numbers are pretty similar for both the 395 and the 385. Battery runtimes are represented by the red bars and the total system power draw per TDP setting is shown in the blue bars. And it seems that the additional power consumption that has to be added on top of the chip's current TDP increases as the TDP goes up. At the beginning, at 15W TDP, the total power consumption is around 25W, so only about 10W more. Later on, at 80W TDP, the total power consumption is listed as 109W, which means an additional 29W. Since at the moment, it is not possible to go below roughly 10 to 13W TDP, or the devices currently ignore lower settings, I don't know, the maximum achievable battery life would be around 4.5 hours. Interestingly, if we reduce the active course to 6, the battery life actually improves as well. It's not by a huge amount, but especially at the lower wattages, it's a few minutes that can actually make the difference. And before we come to a conclusion, I also ran the 3D Mark File Strike benchmark for around 150 times, around 75 each on both handhelds. And again, the graphs look very similar to what we saw in Tomb Raider and Cyberpunk. A small lead of the 385 at lower TDPs, a short neck-to-neck -neck area, and then the 395 is able to outperform the 385 finally, and some hiccups and performance drops at the end. 
Now, here the difference is a bit bigger than in the games, but I guess that's mainly because Firestrike also has a dedicated CPU test that also influences the total score, and here the 16 cores of the 395 really can make a noticeable difference. It literally gets a CPU score twice as high as the 8 cores and of the 385, so that, that is a fact that you have to keep in mind. Still, interesting that the curve basically behaves like in the games before. Overall, it is safe to say that you probably won't need the more expensive AI Max Plus 395 considering it usually costs around $300 to $400 more. The FPS gains are marginal overall and in some scenarios they are equal and sometimes even, especially if untweaked, worse. But that of course will depend on the tested games and how CPU intense these are. Sure, the 16 cores might be more future-proof and if you're also using the handheld as a desktop PC replacement or for work-related stuff like AI models or video editing etc, the 16 core version absolutely makes sense. To be very clear, this video is not sponsored at all and I bought both handhelds with my own money at gpd-minipc.com where they are relatively cheap in comparison, while they will of course also be affected by the current RAM crisis. However, I was still able to get a discount code of $50 on your order at gpdminipc.com if you want to try them out yourself with the code HUBWOOD. So make sure you'll use my link below in the comments or in the description. Keep in mind, they could temporarily be sold out right now. Um, and for me, in Germany, the shipping took around three weeks. While I didn't have any issues with taxes, I didn't have to pay anything considering that for both packages which have been sent in separate deliveries. Okay, as said before, these discoveries I made today will lead to more videos in the near future where I'll run more tests with 6 cores versus all cores and more games, testing external battery options and also run some side-by-side -side benchmarks in more titles. I'll also probably give you a few more tips after tinkering around a bit more with these two and of course some more extended gaming benchmark videos in general. So make sure you won't miss that, yeah just, yeah you know, hit that subscribe button, maybe even hit the bell. Also don't forget to like the video for others to find it more easily, thank you very very much. Also thank you very much for watching until the very end, stay safe, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.